This week, Lab TV travels to an Army research lab in Natick, Massachusetts, to meet a scientist who studies the effects of the environment on the human body. We know that our soldiers are going to have to go into various environments, and they're going to have to perform a mission no matter what it is. It could be in the cold, it could be in the heat. Um, we need to simulate these environments, and we need to see what are the physiological responses when we put people in these different environments. To test the effects of extreme climates, the Army has two climatic chambers, an Arctic chamber and a tropic chamber. They can make wind and rain and create temperatures from minus 70 to 165 degrees. Today, we're in the tropic chamber, studying the effects of heat. When you go out into the heat, you're going to absorb heat from the environment. Body temperature typically is around 37 degrees C. And as you get hot, your core temperature, the temperature inside your body, is going to increase. The other thing that's going to increase is your skin temperature. And those two pieces of information will go up to your brain, to your hypothalamus particularly. So the hypothalamus says, OK, we need to get some of this heat from the body core out. So it does two things right off. The first thing is peripheral vasodilation. When you see people exercise, you'll see they become very flush. That's peripheral vasodilation. That's blood flow going out to these peripheral areas. And what that blood flow is doing is it's carrying that heat from the body core out to the periphery. So then the skin temperature then begins to rise. The second thing that the hypothalamus then tells your body to do is to start sweating. So the sweat comes out of the sweat, pours on your skin, sits on top of your skin, and then evaporates out into the environment. And as it evaporates, it carries heat away from the body. So sweat has to evaporate in order for you to cool. Sweat is about 99% water. So you need to make sure that you are drinking enough water to replace it, or you might become dehydrated. What this does is it impairs your ability to sweat because you don't have as much fluid to sweat with. Today, Dr. Kenefick and his team are performing an experiment. We want to study the impact of DEET on sweating. Does it interfere with sweating? So we can determine, does it interfere with your ability to dissipate heat? For five days before the tests, the scientists acclimatized the volunteer subjects. That means they got their bodies used to the heat. So once that's done, now we can do the experimental testing. So what we're doing when they come in for this test, they actually do three experimental trials on three different days. We'll do a control trial. So this control trial is what happens when you don't wear any deep whatsoever? What is your normal ability to sweat? So we measure that with the capsules. Inside the capsule, there's small instruments that measure humidity and temperature. So when it gets more humid in there, it tells us, OK, this guy is starting to sweat. Another day, we actually put DEET on an area of their arm, and we see whether or not DEET interferes with their ability to sweat. And then we do, in order to simulate how they actually use it in the field, we do what we call the full DEET trial. They put DEET on their face, their ears, their neck. They put it on, on their wrists, along their waist, and along their ankles. During all these tests, we're measuring sweating, measuring body core temperature, and we're measuring heart rate. When the trials are completed, Dr. Kenefick will analyze the data, answer his experimental question, and then he will know even more about the human body. The human body is incredibly adaptable to so many different circumstances. It could be heat, it could be cold, it could be aging. That I found really interesting because science, all science really is, is it's a way of asking questions. And if you have questions, you can use this methodology to answer these questions. And sometimes you might be finding things out that nobody has ever seen before. No one's ever answered this question before. No one's ever seen this response. And you get to see it. To find out more about temperature regulation, sweating, and the scientific method, check out labtvonline.org.